Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for December 21st. My name is Susan Drain. I am a lay reader in this Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be still and aware of the presence of God within and all around. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day and for this time when we can turn our thoughts from busyness and responsibility to your light and your peace. We thank you for all your gifts, for your creation around us, for the abundance of your provision for us, for friends and loved ones, and for both the blessings and the challenges that enrich our lives. We thank you that we can continue to learn and grow in your grace, not just in this Advent season, but throughout our lives. Amen. A reading from the letter to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying, is sure. Here ends the lesson. There's so much here to sink my teeth into and so much to set my teeth on edge. But let me share with you something about where I think I've got so far on this journey of faith and life. Maybe it will resonate with you. In this passage, we are told that the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation, and, quote, training us to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, unquote. If I set you an exercise, as I used to set my students, to write off the top of their heads a list of synonyms and associations for each of these words, what would they be? I know that the associations I had for them when I was in my 20s are very different from those that cling to them now. I noticed even now, as I was writing this reflection, that I kept typing the word upright as uptight. That says something about my youthful view, doesn't it? I certainly saw this model of life as something like an iron maiden, a shape imposed from the outside, and definitely one that confined, restricted, even distorted the human inside. That view is reinforced by the emphasis in this letter on obedience to authority. Titus has been sent to Crete to restore order to the community and to appoint elders to deal with rebellious people and idle talkers, the ones who are upsetting the status quo. 
the reminder to be obedient is right in the passage we read today. And the passage is preceded by an instruction to slaves to be submissive and give satisfaction in every respect, thereby being an ornament to the doctrine of God our Savior. Oh, how I chafed under that view. Can the enslavement of a human being be an ornament to anything? And Titus' task is to remind even the freeborn that they must be subject to rulers and authorities. If this is salvation, I used to think, I might prefer to stick with the unredeemed, who are described here as foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures. They might have more fun, at least. Now I am a little better at setting aside the stuff that comes along with the social and cultural context of the letter. Now I choose to pay attention to the ways in which this salvation is not a straight jacket imposed by a divine killjoy. Instead, I notice the words grace and goodness and loving kindness and mercy and the salvation that comes not by imposition but from the welling up of spirit within us through the water of rebirth, says the letter, and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The result is something far more than a slave. Thus, reborn and renewed, we become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. May it be so. Before we turn to the tasks of the day, let us pray for ourselves and for one another. Give us strength for this day. Give us joy in this day. Comfort those who suffer and those who mourn. Send us wherever we are needed and sustain us on our way. Help us live in the abundance of your grace and life-giving spirit. And we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.